This is part six of the bicycle fork video. I promise that this will be the last of the videos on the bike fork, even if this one has to go for one or two hours. Thankfully, YouTube will not allow me to upload a video that long. In part five, we managed to sweep one blade using guide curves, and we trim the excess off in preparation for adding the fork end to the blade. For this part we are going to finish the entire fork by adding a tapering cut to the end of the blade, adding the fork end itself that will later include the dropout slot, add the dropout slot, add a swept cut that will take the curvature of the blade and transfer it down to the edge of the fork end. Do the same with the trailing edge of the fork end. We're going to patch in a little boundary here to blend things together a little bit better. Add some fillets. Mirror everything. Cut a little bit off at the top. Add a boundary that will become our crown. The crown, the top side of the crown, is what meets the head tube of the frame. We'll finish all this off by adding a hollow three millimeter thick steering tube, and then finally a little bit of a fillet here on the crown to finish everything off. So I'm going to roll back to where we left off in the last video, which was step 14, where we had just finished the sweep, actually step 13, where we had just finished the sweep and trimmed off the excess here. So step 14 is going to be to add that little tapering cut, which will lead down to the fork end. To do this, I'm going to show the layout sketch that was drawn on my right tilted plane that passes through the steering tube. And in that sketch we can see, you'll recall, that we drew go ahead and edit that. We drew some arcs and the shape of the fork end. And these arcs here are where the blade tapers down to the width of the fork end. So we're going to be copying these items and trimming away this excess material on the blade. So making a new sketch on our steering tube center right tilted plane, kind of an awkward name. We're going to copy this line and this line, convert entities. And I'm going to copy this line and this line, convert entities. You can see we're going to be getting rid of this little bit of material here. So now I'm just going to connect these lines together in order to create two enclosed two-dimensional zones. So this is one zone, here's the other one, they're completely contained. And now we can just do an extruded cut through all. That gives us a nice taper on the fork end here, or the blade end rather. That was step 14. Step 15 is to draw the actual fork end. We're going to be copying sketches from our front layout. I'm purposely going to make it a little extra big and you'll see what the reason for that is in a few moments. So rolling back again, I'll make my front layout sketch visible and I'm going to start a new sketch on the plane contained in my inserted file, which is, in this case, the fork dropout plane. So we'll start a new sketch there. What I want to do is copy these lines that represent the contour of the fork end using convert entities. And I'll trim away this part of the circle. And I'm going to copy this line here. our sketches. 
What I want to do is take and offset these lines outward a little bit to make that oversized fork end. So offset entities. Right now select chain is activated so it'll just select the connected together chain of elements. One millimeter should be fine. We're just trying to make this a little bigger than normal. And then I'm going to extend this line out to my new offset lines. Trim away all the excess, and finally I'm going to turn my original profile lines into construction lines, because this is the actual profile I'm going to be extruding. Now actually, I could probably just have gotten away with making this a big square block without going through all this trouble, but because this is the way I did it in the example file, I want to just duplicate that in the video. So here we see this sketch on our dropout plane, and we're going to extrude that up to this point. And what I want to do is leave merge result unchecked. There is our fork end intentionally oversized. What we are going to do in order to add a curve on this outside edge of the fork end that matches the curve of the blade is to actually copy the shape of the curve from the blade and use a swept cut that's going to wrap around the entire fork end. The trouble is the curve on this side and the curve on this side are probably not quite the same. So if we try to take this curve and wrap it all the way to the top, it probably won't match up when we get to this end. So what we're going to do then is cut a dropout slot into the fork end to start with and that way we can take our sweep and end it on the dropout slot in this area and do another swept cut that ends on the dropout slot in this area. That way we will hide the fact that the curvature of the edge on this side does not perfectly match the curvature on this side. That will be hidden by this wide gap between the two. So let's go and do that. I've just completed step 15 and we're going to be drawing the dropout slot which is step 16. So I'm going to turn my sketches back on. In this case I'm going to turn on my dropout slot sketch. I did not happen to copy this into my own layout which is forcing me to go back and turn this back on. If you turn, copy that into your front layout, you don't have to do that. But on this plane, I will draw a new sketch and copy just these lines. And extruded cut. That's going to default to through all. Make sure we cut inward. And there's step 16, our dropout slot. Now it's time to go ahead and do that swept cut that I was talking about. I'm going to rehide my sketches. On this face, draw a new sketch. I'm going to copy these two lines from the blade into it. And then I need to make an enclosed 2D profile. So I'll add line out here. You see that what I'm doing is going outboard of this edge here. I don't have to go too far out. I can always add a dimension if I like, if I'm worried about it. I don't think it's necessary. We're going to take this profile, which is going to act as a cutting tool, and sweep it around to the bottom here in order to carve away this curvature all along the length of this edge of the fork end. We're going to use this edge as our path. By adding this extra little material to the fork end, it's guaranteeing that this farthest out point is still digging into the fork end as it's going through its sweep. If this point was coming right to the edge here, there's always a possibility that a little bit of material wouldn't get cut away just due to the rounding off errors in SolidWorks as it's calculating the sweep. We'll finish that sketch and on this plane we'll draw a new sketch just copy these two lines to be our path. I'm 
Let's hide this sketch. And we can now hide the dropout. Here we can just barely see our profile that we are going to sweep. And here's our path. Going to features, use a new feature I don't think we've used before is the swept cut. This is our profile, the path. This is this sketch that we made, and here's the preview. And now we're not adding material, we're taking it away. Make sure the options are set for follow path. And here we see we've cut this nice curve on the edge of the fork end that perfectly matches up at the top here with the curvature of the blade. Those are steps 17A through C that we just completed. The exact same procedure is done for step 18A through C for the trailing edge of the fork end. I won't bother going through that process again. I'll just roll it forward and we see now that this matches, this curve here matches the curvature of the back or trailing end of the blade. But if we turn on our zebra stripes, we see that even though these meet along this curve, the surfaces are neither tangent or equal curvature across the seam here. We can see the stripes are not aligned either on this surface or this surface. And the reason for that is that the blade was coming downward at an angle and the fork end is going straight down. So they meet at an angle here, which causes a little bit of a kink in the surfaces where they match up. So we're going to use the same trick we used before on our bicycle seat. We're going to slice out a little piece and do a little cheat by adding a new boundary that blends the two smoothly together. I don't think there's any need to turn any sketches on to do this. I'm just going to draw a sketch on this face. We'll draw a line going across. Make these two parallel. And I think I'll use perhaps perhaps a three millimeter gap and we will do an extruded cut. We will make sure that the only thing we cut is this fork end. So now we have our gap. What we want to do is patch these back together using the boundary boss base. So we just completed step 19. Select this face, select the second one in a nearby area. So if I selected near this point, then select near this point in the upper face. Well, it looks like I didn't do it right. Let's try that again. Click near this point here. This point here, now they've joined together properly. And let's set both of those for tangency to face. We could try curvature, but we're doing a lot of weird things here, so it might not be able to match the curvature. Finish. And here we see our blended area, and this has remained flat. If we go back to our zebra stripes, now we see the stripes go straight through all these surfaces, which means that they are nicely, smoothly connected together. That was step 20 that we just completed. Now I can dress up this end with some fillets. I'm going to have a nice fillet going along this edge here and here. And we'll also have a fillet running around the dropout slot. I'm going to add a one millimeter fillet on this edge. And ideally, this should go all the way around because these are supposed to be all tangent surfaces, but you see it stops for some reason prematurely here. When that happens, just click the next edge where it's stopped and that should get it to continue on. So now we have a nice fillet wrapping all the way around. We have to do that on the other side here. I'll click this edge and in this case it's not making it around at all. So I might have to give it a little help by clicking some additional edges and sometimes you'll suddenly see the whole edge highlight when you think it isn't going to work at all. And here again we see it stop prematurely, so I'll try clicking that edge. And now it's made it all the way around. I'm not quite sure why it's doing that, because these surfaces should be tangent to each other. So, 
If you see the fillet not highlighting, don't despair. Try clicking some additional edges and see if by giving that, that extra help, you can get the fillet to go around the entire path. That was step 21 we just completed. I'm going to finish this off with a fillet on the dropout edge itself. So go to fillet. I think I'll make it a half millimeter, which is already typed in here. Just click on one edge, and we see that this is actually all one contiguous connected edge that goes from both sides of the dropout slot, so that looks good. And that completed step 22. When we added our patching boundary here, it combined the blade finally with the fork end, so we have just one single body in our part. It's time for us finally to mirror this to the other side. So we'll select the front plane, go to mirror, and we're going to mirror a body. Make sure merge solids is checked. Click on the fork, and that completes Step 23. We're just about into the home stretch here. It's now time to add the crown. And what I've done for this is cut away a section by just cutting away a curve, leaving me a sort of oval shape on the top. And I created a boundary going from a circular profile which is where the crown meets the head tube, so you definitely want this to be a circle. Let that boundary just blend down into the blades on a somewhat interesting line here. So this was done with a little bit of experimentation, and by making the boundary tangent or equal curvature to the blades here, we get a nice organic blend between the two. And if I turn off my lines here, we can see how that's one nice form that transitions from a single crown to two separate blades. What I simply did, I'll just show what I did rather than going through all the steps. I'll roll back on my tilted right plane. I made a curve and I just experimented with what was going to end up looking good. I played with how far down the curve should go and what the radius of it should be, and looked at where that was going to intersect the blades in this spot and this spot here. And I didn't want to bring it down too far because I didn't want to come down below the leading or trailing edge. So you can play around with this until you get something that's pleasing to you. And I just cut that right off. And then to make the boundary, I copied this circle from a layout sketch that we did way at the beginning of this process, way up at the top of the layout sketches. Just made my boundary go between that sketch circle and this cutoff surface, making sure that I'm tangent to the face. You can also try going curvature, but I think it didn't work too well when I tried that and also try to select once again the sketch and the surface that you're going to do the boundary up to in the same general area so that these points connect up properly. There's the crown. The second to the last step was to add the steering tube which is a three millimeter thick hollow tube. This was done by drawing a circle on the top of the crown and extruding up to an appropriate vertex in our layout sketch. So let's take a look at that circle, which has a center that's pierced to my steering axis, and then one coincident relation to my front layout sketch that determines what the diameter of the circle is going to be. And that extrusion just goes up to either this vertex or this vertex in my front layout. The other approach is to draw a sketch on the front plane and copy this line into that sketch and the steering axis and just do a revolve with thin wall 
to create the tube. Both will give you the same result. And the final step was just to put a little bit of a radius on this edge of the crown. Now going back to the crown for a moment, you have several different choices on what you want to do and you can experiment a little bit. This example 2 file that I provided for you has a very simple crown. It's nothing more than an extruded circle with a big blending fillet going between the crown and the blades. So this is a little bit more of a traditional looking fork. And this is example 3 which is similar to example 1. But instead of trying to build a perfectly blended in crown, here what I've done is I still made that curve cut here but I've purposely shaped the boundaries so that it does not meet at a tangent blend and then I added a fillet between the two surfaces. So this gives a kind of an interesting look. To, to achieve this I had to add some guide curves to this boundary here and here and also some guide curves here and here to get this concave to convex sort of a look. I've seen this sort of style on several bicycles as well. So I think this gives you a lot of possibilities and I think I finished this video in less than the hour that I was warning you about. So good luck.